Welcome to our Reptiles module, Part A. The focus of this module will be on an introduction to reptiles in general, and then with more specific focus on turtles and identification of Ontario's turtle species. Reptiles in along the evolutionary history evolved dry and scaly skin um, to be able to survive extended periods uh, without water, and they've also evolved eggs that they lay with watertight shells so that they could break their link with water that differentiates them from amphibians or most amphibians. Reptiles, their bodies are covered with horny epidermal scales. Um, they usually have paired limbs with five toes and claws adapted for climbing or running or paddling. The limbs in, are absent in some groups, for example, snakes and some other lizards. They have respiration solely by lungs, which is again is another break and change between their fish and then amphibian uh, relatives. They have a three-chambered heart, except in crocodiles, which have a four-chambered heart. Reptiles, of course, are ectothermic animals, which means they depend on the outside environment for regulation of their uh, heat and body. Um, the sexes separate. Fertilization is generally internal, and they do have a hemipenis as a copulatory organ. The eggs are covered with a calcareous or leather membrane, which are watertight, and their embryonic membranes, amnion, chorion, yolk sac, and allantois are all present during al uh, embryonic life. So within the animal kingdom and within our vertebrates, there are four orders of reptilia. Crocodilians and Sphenodontia and Squamata and Testudens. Um, we're only going to be focusing on Ontario species, so of which there's one lizard, um, several snakes, and several turtles. In Ontario, there are eight species of turtles. Um, which is actually more than any other province in Canada. Th many of these turtles, though, as we go through them, are actually considered either at risk or uh, endangered. So there is a number of work being done um, within many different groups to preserve and to prevent the further habitat loss and destruction of these animals. There are several things that we look for to identify turtles. Turtles have a carapace, which is the upper part of the shell, primos composed primarily of the ribs and the backbone fused together. The large scales um, present on the carapace and also the plastron, which is the lower part of the shell, are called scutes. The plastron, or the lower part of the shell, the shape, the color, is extremely important for ID. Generally speaking, we'll find turtles close to freshwater streams or wetlands, rivers and lake shorelines. They generally require a soft sediment overburden to lay their eggs in the spring, so they're often found along trails and roadsides where fill has been brought in uh, because that's easy for them to manipulate and to dig. One of the more recognizable species of turtle, of course, is the snapping turtle. They will, of course, lay their, uh, their eggs in um, various different overburdens along roadsides, ditches, gravels, roads. You'll find them a lot of movement around the spring and also in the fall. They can be sometimes uh, found in forests where they travel to lay their eggs and also to mate. The snapping turtle is the largest freshwater turtle in Canada uh, and it can be quite large. So in this case um, we can see that between 20 to 50 centimeters long in terms of a carapace. It's got a long tail, a very small plastron, um, a broad carapace with pointed scutes at the rear and uh, brown, black or olive carapace uh, coloration. Relatively large head with a short pointed snout and hooked upper beak. This species is, uh, can be found in almost any freshwater habitat. Because it has such a small plastron, it can't withdraw into its shell. So its only defense from predators is to snap repeatedly or to scare them away. It's not a very strong swimmer, so they're usually observed walking along the bottom of small ponds or rivers or crossing roads. The spiny soft shell uh, is a turtle with a very long neck and elongated tubular snout, as you can see here in the picture. Uh, this allows the turtle to breathe while almost being fully submerged. It's also known as the pancake turtle because it has a very flat, round, and leathery upper shell or carapace.
The eastern musk turtle is a very, very small turtle, so between only 7.5 to 13 centimeters long. Um, very easy to miss. Uh, they have a domed carapace, as you can see here, um, with a very pointed snout. The carapace is, is brown, gray, or black. And one of the unique identifying features for this turtle is those two yellow or very light colored stripes that extend from the nose uh, and ab above and below the eye along the side of the head and neck. The plastron of the eastern uh, uh, musk turtle is quite small. It's somewhat cross-shaped, as you can see here. It usually has areas of smooth skin between the skin, so it's not fully fused. Notice that it's different between the, um, the uh, anterior part, closer to the head, is quite larger. The part towards the back of the turtle, in, in terms of the plastron, is significantly smaller. The Midland Painted Turtle is, has a very long carapace, relatively, um, unkeeled black or olive carapace with smooth edges on the rear scutes, yellow stripes on the head, and uh, red or yellow stripes on the neck. The Plastron is also quite different than the Western Painted Turtle, as you can see here it's relatively one color, um, and there are also red bars or blotches on the marginal scutes of the carapace, as you can see here in the image. So here we can see several of the painted turtles uh, in terms of their species and contrast them. So the western painted turtle, just looking specifically at the plastron here, um, you can see that it's got a very intricate patterning. The midland painted turtle has almost no patterning on the plastron, but does have some coloration towards the back end of the, of the plastron. The eastern painted turtle has no coloration whatsoever on the plastron. So all these painted turtles are, are different based solely on some of the identification characteristics of the plastron. Our painted turtles are, have those very distinctive dark red or orange markings, which uh, no other native species to Ontario will have those colors of orange or red. They are our only non-threatened turtle species in Ontario. Uh, they are, however, still susceptible to the same threats like habitat destruction as other turtles are. The spotted turtle gets its name, of course, from its spots uh, located on the carapace as well as on, the, on its uh, uh, body and neck. It's relatively small, only 9 to 13 centimeters uh, long. It's a small turtle with a black, relatively brown carapace with bright yellow spots on the top of its head. Males have dark eyes and a dark chin, where females have orange eyes and a yellow chin. The spotted turtle has a very unique plastron in which there is uh, yellow or orange with a black blotch covering the outer portion of each scute. A wood turtle is a much larger turtle than the spotted turtle. It's between 16 to 25 centimeters long. It's got a rough or brown grayish carapace. Uh, a lower neck and parts of the legs are orange, which you can see here in the bottom image. So the neck and the chin front legs are vivid, vivid, bright orange. The carapace has these growth rings, um, similar to fish uh, scales, which will, of course, uh, increase over time. Similar to the spotted turtle, the plastron has black blotches as well, although the patterning is very different. Notice the orange present on the, on the limbs and the tail. The plastron here is yellow with a black blotch, but only at the rear outer corner, and certainly with uh, a V-shaped notch at the end of the tail. The Blandings turtle is a relatively larger turtle. It's got uh, a smooth, long, domed carapace, sometimes with light uh, colored spots or streaks. Its chin, throat, and lower surface are bright yellow. And one of the other interesting features of this is its smile. If you notice its lips, they're always upturned towards the face. Looks like it has a constant smile on. The plastron of the Blandings turtle has similar colorations to the wood turtle and the spotted turtle, only it's more textured, as you can see here. But also, uniquely to this species, it's got a hinged plastron, which you can see here. So again, that's a unique feature for this particular turtle. Um, the Blandings turtles will inhabit shallow lakes, ponds, wetlands, anywhere there's clean water. The females of the species don't mature until they're at least 14 years old, and uh, individuals in the wild can live up to 75 years.
The northern map turtle is so named because of the yellow, green, or orange stripes that occur all over the body, including the carapace. So if you look carefully at the head and neck in this picture, you'll see the contour lines, hence the map, the contour intervals present there. Also notice that the scutes, the marginal scutes at the rear of the turtle are quite pointed, similar but much more pronounced than even the snapping turtle. So the northern map turtles will inhabit generally larger rivers and lakes with slow moving water. They require very high wa quality of water um, because of the mollusks that the females will eat. They're known for communal basking and they'll be found piled up together. So in this image you can see the contours present on the face and the neck and the head of this particular turtle.